Welcome to the Funeral Nation Web Show, the best effing web show. Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 34. I am Ryan Thogmartin. That is Jeff, the funeral commander Harbison. Jeff is you're 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 fully settled into your new habitat now, um, which is fantastic. So I'm excited that we're recording today. What do we have coming up on the show? Well, it's a good show today because we're going to talk about some important stuff. But uh, this show is brought to us by the Fast Funding Group, American Funeral Financial, CNJ Financial, and the Funeral Funding Center. If you have life insurance policy, you need to call these guys. I use them personally. Get your money. Don't let it sit out there. Anyway... Uh, today, we're going to have uh, an, a guest that we're going to talk about DNA in the funeral industry. That's an emerging subject. The spotlight on the funeral director uh, comes from Detroit. And the WTF makes us think about multi-use hearses and maybe the vacation movie. That's right. you got to <laughs> use what, what's available. That's right. You know what? I, I like it when they when they innovate. Okay? So you got to <laughs> do what you got to do. It's funny that the innovation comes on what you use the hearse for and not what you're doing in your business. That's that's exactly right. You know, hey, it's multi-use. Those things are expensive, so you got to get everything you can out of it. Hey, so uh, what's the buzz going on this week, Ryan? Jeff, I think the, the, the buzz really this week is ICCFA moving from Charlotte next year to Nashville, Tennessee, and then they'll come back to Charlotte on 2000, or 2019. This was a legislative uh, move, uh, mm-hmm. driven move for ICCF, ICCFA. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, from what I read and understand is the city of Charlotte reached out to ICCFA. And uh, what I find a bit odd is they put it off two years. Yep. Did they have an anticipation something's going to change, whatever? But anyway, um Good for ICCFA. You know, they uh, jumped in there, got this done. Um, I, I think it's even greater because there's another spot where everybody speaks the English that I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't have to take an interpreter like if I was in Michigan or uh, up in New England somewhere. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I'll have to get me an outfit. I might have to bust out some Roy Rogers looking stuff out there next year. I can um, see you in some, some colorful cowboy boots that match that really colorful jacket you have. You know, um, now that you say that, uh, you put me on a mission, so I'll, I'll have to figure <laughs> something up. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. Well, look, the, uh, this buzz was brought to us this uh, show by Simple Funeral Payment Plan, which is powered by CareCap. If you have accounts receivables, your payment policy isn't working. These guys are the accounts receivable recovery experts. Roll that promo, Ryan. The funeral isn't over if you haven't been paid. Contact us at simplefuneralpaymentplan.com to find out how to become a $0 accounts receivable funeral home. Jeff, we're moving now into our interview segment, and we've got an interview today with a a brand new sponsor of the Funeral Nation show. Can you tell us who that is? Yeah, our guest today, Ryan, is Al Richards. He is the proprietor of Funeral DNA ID. Something really interesting I think everybody should pay attention to. So let's roll that interview. Al, welcome to the Funeral Nation TV show. Hey, Jeff. D- Good to have you here. Funeral DNA ID is one of our new sponsors, and we thank you and excited to have you here. So, Al, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, uh, thanks, guys, for having me on uh, Funeral Nation TV. You guys are, like, tearing it up on the social media front. I'm glad to have uh, Funeral DNA ID is a... Uh, a featured uh, member of your close knit group there. So very cool. Um, so a little bit about me, uh, last 30 years or so, I've been in the actual healthcare uh, and life science and IT sectors. And all those things uh, really are, are, are kind of coming together for me in the last year or so, the light bulb's gone off. And uh, I've seen the need for uh, the collection of, uh, of DNA and uh, in the postmortem arena. And uh, I happened to work for, at one time, GE Life Science, and I was a product manager for a, a product from a company we integrated about five, six years ago called Wattman, and they make this uh, really cool FTA card. We'll talk about that a little later, but uh, they've been using that in the, the human DNA 
uh, identification collection forensics um, departments all over the world that use that card for years. It's a great little piece of uh, technology to collect, protect, and preserve DNA. So again, light bulbs went off about uh, uh, opportunity to, to really help folks out and uh, pre present the opportunity to collect DNA from loved ones the very last time they can get it is at a memorial service. So that's where I got cool. started. Fantastic. Al, you and I met uh, this past year at ICCFA in New Orleans. Please mm -hmm. tell us how Funeral ID uh, got started and where you're based out of. Well, we're, uh, we had a good time. I brought my son and I went, uh, went down to New Orleans, and uh, that was uh, quite the road trip. And got to our booth uh, space, and it was uh, kind of monsooning outside, and it was literally raining in our booth. But uh, fortunately, that was, that was really only raining only the first day. But um, great experience. I uh, met a lot of great people in the industry, had a lot of great conversations, saw a lot of light bulbs go off with other people when I talked to them about why would you do this? Why, what's the need for collecting DNA and how we're going to do it and how can it be, uh, how can it add uh, relevance to my business of being a, a funeral home uh, uh, owner and uh, is there a possible revenue stream and got all those conversations going and people were real excited about it. So it, it was a good time and uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but I'm based in New Jersey, um, but uh, I've got the, the website up and running, the funeral DNA ID.com. So that's a secure e-commerce website. It's got a public side that people can learn about the DNA um, and why you want to take it, how we take it, but also a, a, a secure side for the funeral professionals. They need to log in and then once they log in, they can see uh, pricing and how to order and, and stuff like that. So cool. that's kind of set up. The uh, collection and preservation of DNA has become a really big deal in the funeral industry. Al, what's different about funeral DNA ID? couple things. Uh, thanks for asking, Jeff. Um, I mentioned a little earlier that I used to work for, for GE and, and, and had uh, the opportunity to get exposed to this product, this FTA, Fast Transfer Analysis uh, product. What's cool about it is, um, you know, I know there's a couple, there are other companies or services out there that, uh, that are offering to collect DNA at the, at the memorial, time of memorial. And I think they use the exact same kind of uh, process, which, which we do. It's basically a it's called a, a buckle cell collection. So you have a sterile tip swab. You do a wipe on the inside of the cheek, like that, all aggressively. And then, then they, put this, they put it in an envelope, and they send it off to the labs. And I think both companies I'm thinking of are both based in Canada. So they've got to get across the border, and, and however long that takes, and whatever that process is, I don't know if it's paid for, the, for the funeral directors or not. But anyway, it goes there. They process it. They purify it. A couple months later, they, they send it back in a nice high-end, a nice looking keepsake for the families. But what's cool about what we do and what differentiates us is, is really back to this card. Because we do the same cheek swab for the buckle cells, but the, the, the person doing the, the, the preparation of the body, all they do is they do it with cheek swab and they're gonna basically transfer the cells from the swab to this card. This card, it's called an indicating card. It's pink right now. It'll turn white to indicate, indicate that the samples are on there. You let it dry, you fold it up, you put it in a uh, multi-barrier envelope with a desk and pack in it, you seal it. Once it's sealed in this environment, it's it's good to be stored indefinitely at room temperature. You don't need to you don't need to put it on ice, you don't need to do anything with it. And I I'd, I'd advise people not to do anything with it until they're ready to, to test it. Uh, because what's again cool about the, the FTA cards is when they when they had a sent to I call it it's a biogenetics lab for testing. They take a little hole punch, and they just take a little, small little piece of that card, and that's all they need to get to, to get the DNA test back. And they can take that the rest of that card and put it back in, in storage if, if that's where it's come from, or they can send it back to the family. So you can get multiple tests out of that one little card. So again, it's it's ease of use, it's just, uh, safety and security. These the, the transfer, you don't have to worry about the swab going in the mail and, and growing weird stuff on it. And the, and the price point is extremely affordable for both the funeral directors to acquire and still have a margin to build in and charge families. It's still an affordable price to get families their DNA sample. That's, uh, that's pretty cool, Al, um, which it makes it relevant because that's the last time DNA can be collected. Right. Um, it's also a revenue generator for the business at the funeral home, correct? Yeah, and it's and I mentioned before um, – it is, and one reason why it is because the price point on the kits, and I have like three different varieties of, of the kits right now uh, available online. Um, 
but basically the price thirty nine dollars or forty nine dollars. And um, at that transfer price, uh, when the uh, funeral home adds on their collection fee, um, I would recommend they price that uh, the single collection FTA card at ninety nine to one hundred fifty dollars. So there's a good margin in there for them for just one card. But what's really cool about this is it's the, the samples are so easy to collect. And the, and the price point of the cards are so relatively low, there's an opportunity for what we call a, in the world of sales, uh, the upsell um, uh, capability uh, for the funeral home to say, you know, if you guys are sold on this idea, it's a great thing to collect the DNA. There's multiple surviving siblings of, of grandpa here. Do you want to do one for every every um, child, everyone that's, that's remaining? And mm -hmm. there's no reason they can't, Sign them up for multiple kits. Um, heck, you can, they can even have these on hand and offer the surviving members coming in from all over the country the ability to buy their own kits, open it up, and test their own DNA and save it. It doesn't have to be a one collection. So they can, there's a really margin there and ability for them to, to make some revenue on these kits. That's Go fantastic. Ahead. And uh, you have a cremation ID product as well, too, Al. What, what is that? That's one of the, the varieties of our kits, right? It's called a positive DNA ID. And it's, it's pretty similar to the contents of the other kits, although, <coughs> excuse me, I've added a, an adaption for what the folks in the forensic care community use, a, a, a data collection card. So it has uh, not only a, it has a finger strip kit in there, and the FTA card is, is attached to this card. It collects uh, the information, date of birth, date of death, cause of death, next of kin, contact information, who did the sample, all the, all the information you would need to go back later on to prove uh, proof of positive identification as part of the, the, the best practice processes in the cremation business to ensure that they've done the right thing by the family. And they can take this card out of their file and say, this is what we did, and this is the proof that we, we processed uh, the right person. And um, and they have a choice, the, the cremation folks, they can store this FTA card in in data card on site or they can put it off site in a secure location if, if they feel more comfortable about that. Right. Wow. Well, Al, um, in closing a couple things, what you're saying is that DNA is destroyed or gone during the cremation process. So every family really should at least be offered the chance to preserve for a funeral home to preserve and collect uh, the DNA, especially during cremation. It's relevant also for burial. Um, in closing, what does your uh, crystal ball say about DNA in the funeral industry? Well, I'm, I'm really passionate about this whole thing, Jeff. I mean, I told you guys it came from the, the healthcare, health IT biz. I uh, spent a lot of years uh, in hospital labs and clinical diagnostics looking at blood, um, looking at the sciences. In my last gig, I was involved. I built a healthcare IT vertical and a data collection company. And when I see what's going on in that set up sector of the world, that things that are happening with your medical records right now, something called the continuity of care record. That's basically an aggregation of your electronic medical record. That's available now to anybody, uh, a, a surviving person uh, from someone that's passed away. You can go to the hospital with a power of attorney letter and say, I like my, my dad's electronic medical record. If they get that, if they pair that with their DNA sample, keep those things together, you've got an incredibly powerful tool for future problems in your family in your family tree. If someone comes up with a disease that, that the doctors think is, is genetic based, you're gonna to wanna to know, hey, you don't happen to have your, your folks still around your ears, the way you would get their, their, their DNA to, to, to do some diagno diagnosis of, uh, of your heredity. And if you say, yeah, man, I got, I've got my funeral DNA ID kit, and I've got my dad's medical record, those guys, you've done half the job for them. They can, they can get down to what could be what could be ailing you guys could save your life, Donald. You, know, you never know. So that's exactly right. I mean, that, and that's what I think is interesting is that uh, the funeral industry is getting involved with not only serving today, but for generations to come by offering these type and your type product. Um, Al, you're going to be with us um, for the next several months as an advertiser with uh, cremation DNA, uh, excuse me, funeral DNA ID. You know, and we're going to be running some ads and stuff. And what we'd like to be able to do is start maybe looking at some promotions along the way for you, uh, for folks to get introduced uh, to the brand. And certainly if they can find you, they want to look at funeraldnaid.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll be seeing our promos that are rolling out soon. So we appreciate you having, having you on here today. 
I think that this is a, a fantastic launch and idea in our industry, much needed. And we'll see some uh, families' lives saved in the future because of this particular type product. Well, so well, thanks again, both Brian and Jeff, for having me. And just so everybody knows, I've already built in that 10% discount for when you put in your promo code, Funeral Nation TV, and you do a checkout at uh, at the uh, Funeral DNA ID. So it's uh, it'll be there for the next six months. There you go. Well, I appreciate you being on here, and uh, we'll see you again here shortly, I'm sure. Good deal. Thanks, guys. All right. Take care, buddy. You can predict the future. However, you can protect your business and the families you're serving. Funeral DNA ID kits that collect and preserve DNA during the cremation and burial process. Swap, spot, seal, legacy preserve. For more information, please visit FuneralDNAID.com. This interview segment was brought to us by our sponsor, Memory Care by AP Laser. These guys are doing some very, very innovative things, so let's roll that tape. This effing segment was brought to you by Memory Care, powered by AP Laser. Memory Care is a life story etched forever. For more information, visit APLaser.com. All right, Jeff, you said our spotlight comes from uh, from Detroit, Michigan this week. Uh, who's mm-hmm. our spotlight going to shine on? You know, Ryan, uh, each week we share positive stories and shine spotlights on funeral directors and industry professionals making a difference in our communities and in our profession, doing something good. This week we shine a spotlight on the staff at Trinity Funeral Chapel Homes in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, recently, citizens and business owners in Detroit got together and created a uh, motorcade parade to draw attention for the reduction of the senseless killing and violence in that city. The Reverend Curtis C. Williams, CEO of Trinity Chapel Funeral Homes, um, participated, had a hearse there, and he, his objective is for the Detroit youth to stop thinking about guns and knives that will solve the problems with others. Um, to quote him, he said it's about unity, peace, to help young people to realize that they can do other things than shoot and kill. And that they need to learn a, a point of conflict resolution. They had hundreds of people who uh, participated to shed light on the, uh, the answer. So our kudos to the staff and team at Trinity Funeral Chapel, funeral homes and the other funeral homes that participated, because that's a powerful message. You know, I mean, it really is. It's, it's a tough time, um, especially for some folks, or young folks in our cities to uh, take a step back and, you know, you only get dead once. That's That's it. That's right. That's right. And you only got one life to live. So live it, (laughs) live it right. All right, Jeff has a great spotlight segment. And now we're, we're transitioning into our WTF, but we're keeping with the hearse theme. So uh, in our spotlight, the funeral professions using hearse in a, a, a different uh, means to shed light on, on something. And now in our, our WTF, where we take a humorous look it's something that we find, uh, whether it's it's browsing around online, but it's a humorous look at the funeral profession, something you're going to talk about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it's going to make you say, what the funeral? So, all right, Jeff, what do we think? I, First I, of all, I, I hope that that's a canoe or some sort of water vehicle on top. Kayak, maybe. Yeah, or somebody really tall, right? Um, it's just a little bothersome to me simply because could you, there has to be a roof rack on this hearse to hold it down, (laughs) right? Yeah, I I guess maybe it's one of those hearses that has, uh, the thing on top where you can set flower arrangements inside of it. Yeah, maybe so. But you know, we, we can't forget the ever present respectful Landau side. Um, but when I saw this, it was reminiscent of, uh, uh, vacation when they put old aunt edna up there and you know, carried it across country and let her off so uh i don't know maybe maybe the guy was too long to put in the back there you um, go there you it's go. hard to say and it's innovation you know what our folks out here we just don't stop we make sure we get the job done so uh that's right this you know, is a WTF ride down the highway. If sure is, like we, <laughs> we possibly could be way off the mark, Jeff. Maybe this funeral director is, ha, has a service in one of these areas of the country that's been getting just bombarded with monsoon rain, and this is the only way they can get the, the casket and body out to the graveside is with a kayak. Probably not, I think, but you know what? I think you're reaching there. I think it's Damn. Skippy. 
I think it's Skippy and the owners are away and he wanted to go take a ride. But <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> All right. Hey, tell us your thoughts below. What do you what do you think is happening in this week's WTF segment? So this segment's brought to us by Disrupt Media and the Disrupt You Show. Let's roll that tape. Well, Commander, this wraps up episode 34, and it's time to look ahead to next week's episode 35. We've got something lined up pretty special for 35. Yeah, we're going to kind of hold that up. Uh, we're going to talk about Texas. Um, so it's all about the Lone Star State, really, for the next two weeks. So our guest uh, will be on here from Texas. And uh, we'll start with a fresh WTF and spotlight. And then we'll make a special announcement about what's going on. That's By right. the way, we got to stop this early morning recording. Number one, you're <laughs> killing me. There's not a cigar store open anywhere. And two, I'm having to, you know, drink out of this tub and I got the door closed. I can't let folks see this, but it's a tough way to start the day. This I, I bet it is. I mean, you know, we're doing the best we can, Jeff. You're the one that signed the move on the other side of the country. Uh you know, you change things, not me. Well, hey, dude, uh, you play golf. You've seen this spot out here. so I know. I, man. It ain't that bad. I think I've had a hard time do, adjusting. We really need to do a <laughs> show live from Phoenix on the golf course. And there's probably a drinking game that could be involved with the show or, or something like that. Uh, I can think Cigar Puffs, uh, oh, Mrs. Uh, we'll have to do that. Maybe we can sponsor a Funeral Nation TV um, golf tournament sometime there we go there we go hey if you've got connections reach out to us hit us up through our website funeralnation.tv not.com funeralnation.tv all right this wraps up 35 uh there was earth i'm sorry 34 there was no cigar but the the rum bottle's empty uh, we can't see it but i'm i'm, I'm guessing that it's, it's early there and you've pounded it down so um Make sure that you're tuned in next week. We have two big weeks ahead of us where we're going to be doing some very special things that you don't want to miss. Make sure you're engaging with us on social media. And look, there are thousands of you, about 18,000 of you that are watching this episode. So you should feel guilty if you, one, haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, two, you haven't commented on an episode yet. So let us know you're watching. Give us your thoughts. Hit us up on social media, on Twitter and Facebook. Until next time, have a great effing week. Out here. <laughs>